Yo, what's going on, fam? Uh, welcome to Marketing WTF with Tran and Fabris. This is episode number nine. We are back at you with a uh, another, I like, uh, exciting topic this week. Um, and it's all about content marketing. The why, the how, the what. And specifically, I wanted to showcase um, Kevin's skill set around how he utilizes content marketing um, in his business for on behalf of his clients, right? The entire structure from soup to nuts, ideation, to actual content creation and then execution in the sense of where those things go and how to deploy those assets. So without further ado, content marketing, uh, the ins and outs, episode nine, marketing WTF. Kevin, what is up, my man? Not much, man. Thanks for the nice intro. Uh, really what I want to get into in, in today's episode and the reason that I think it's actually really important for us is like in 2023 everybody knows that content is the key right content is what's going to set you free content is what's going to let people connect with you but actually having a strategy where you can actually make the most out of it and the content's created for a reason is an absolute game changer right like you're not when you get started just make content for the point of making content get it out there don't get stuck on all like the the small little pieces but like once you're up and running, it's really important to be making that content for a reason and making content that actually moves a needle for your company, right? And over the last couple of years, we put together a process that that really moves the needle. Um, and basically, it's just making content with a particular reason, right? Say for digital marketing companies, you're going to be thinking about, okay, how can I actually get the most? My, ki my clients want us to handle their social. My clients want us to handle their ads. Uh, my clients want us working on their website, making blogging, making sure that they show up in SEO. So how do you know what to actually do? Are you actually just making a piece of content? Like oh, that yeah. shouldn't, Go ahead. right? Like it's a huge thing, right? And this is why you come up with your uh, enterprise package, right? This is why instead of charging 1500 bucks a month, you can charge somebody 10 grand or more, right? Because what you're saying is, hold on, I got this. And not only do I have this, here's a strategy that helps you implement it. I absolutely know this is going to work because of these reasons. Uh, and basically, as we get into it, basically, I look at the content process like it has three parts. Uh, you're going to start off with your research part. That's how you know that you're making content that actually works. Uh, then you get into your creation part. That's where you're designing content that's going to hit people in the actual spot they are in the buying cycle, right? Not everybody is at the same stage of no like trust. Not everybody's on the same platform. Not everybody likes videos or long form videos or blog posts, right? So how do you get that same information out to people everywhere at the same time? Uh, and then, you know, the, the third part of it is actually implementation and revision. Like, how do you know it works? Yeah. So I think just to recap what you said, right. Um, and you guys can probably tell, uh, Kevin is a master at doing this because of just how he went off on just after the intro. Right. Uh, why is it important? First and foremost, like I want everyone to kind of be that is listening to this episode, right. Or watching this, however, you're consuming the content to understand that we just dedicate, wanted to dedicate an entire episode to this because of how important the concept of content marketing is. Right. So at the very top, we need to make sure that you as a business owner or an agency owner or consultant um, emphasizes enough and buys into the fact that content marketing is important for your business and for your client's business. OK, um, so with that, just the very top question um, I want to ask you, Kevin, why is content marketing so important for a business owner? Well, one thing that's really important to actually put out there is anything you put out is content marketing, mm -hmm. right? People have like the the thought that it's like, say, the videos you put on different social platforms or, you know, just content marketing equals blog posts. But no, content is literally anything that you're putting in front of someone, right? And then we define, like we develop a more complex structure to just make sure that we're not making it for no reason. And we're talking to people when they're at a specific point of the buyer's journey. You know, what's going to actually connect with people in certain spots? Not everybody wants the same thing at the same time, right? So um, that's kind of how I feel about the overall process. And then why is why is actually marketing with content important? To me, what content means is value, right? If somebody's choosing to consume your content, it's not because you're saying like, hey, look how fucking cool I am, right? Because nobody wants that content. 
-hmm. every time that somebody's looking at the content, they want to know what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what it, it basically does for you. Right. If somebody is, is finding you on social because they like recipe videos and you give them that recipe video, there's an easy payoff at the end of this video, you know, how to make, you know, Philly cheat steaks or whatever. Uh, if you're watching one of your short form videos about the importance of a hook, I have an understanding that if I give you 15 seconds of my time, by the end of this video, I'm going to know how to craft a hook. Maybe I'm going to get some examples and maybe I'm going to think about it, like how it applies to my business. Right. But where a lot of companies maybe will fall short with this is they just made that piece of content. But what do you do? How do you actually leverage it? How do you turn it into leads? How do you turn it into a warm retargeting audience? How do you turn it into actually people who buy from you? Right. And that's, what content marketing is in 2023. Let's take this short form video and turn somebody into, you know, they know me because I saw this video. I'm going to send them three or four more. That's going to make them like me. I'm going to send them to the website. I'm going to get them to opt in. I'm going to get them on a call. And now it's not only do they trust me, they trust me with their business. Yeah. Right? And I think that's fascinating you say that that way, because if we were basically going back to episode eight and we we're talking about the story brand framework, right? And how you can use that, utilize that framework to then build a brand script, your script for your company, right? Who you serve, how you serve them, how you are a guide in their hero's journey, right? What type of pain points do they have? What keeps them up at night? What do they want? What is the goal, the outcome, the desired thing that they want? And how can you or your services help them to do that? That extension can, or that say concept can then be extended into your content marketing blueprint as well, right? So the stuff that Kevin's talking about, right? In, in, in other words is, this is how you show up in the marketplace to help your potential customers or clients. So if you don't show up, meaning you don't have any marketing or content or material out there, that's literally how you're showing up. You're not. And all it takes for a competitor to basically take most of the market share or take most of your, the customers that should be yours is they just put more content out there. So think about it from that standpoint. And content, if you reframe content, reframe it as just conversations. How many conversations are you having with your potential customers and clients? Because I guarantee you, if you chose entrepreneurship or business ownership, specifically small business ownership, right? You are a type of person that is proactive in nature. You are a starter. And typically what that, what, what that means is you're choosing to uh, whether it's on behalf of even a corporation, right? The type of person that you've kind of fit, um, a personality you fit in that is you are a go-getter, right? And if that's that type of person, uh, right? That type of person, what happens is content allows you to then leverage, right? Another channel to be able to have more conversations with people. However, they choose to consume that conversation is the different content marketing types, right? And, and not, not to be cynical, but a, a lot of the times people don't know what they don't know until they come across your content. Right. right. Like, so it's a way for you to demonstrate your expertise. It's a way for you to answer questions. You know, like I said, it's what they're thinking in their head. Mm -hmm. They'll get into a certain, like, we have to praise the algorithm here. If they type in like how to get the most out of Google ads and they go through three or four things, and then finally you show up, you know, you've now shown up as a Google ads expert. You're able to answer their actual questions because you have that piece of content that, that is designed properly. Right. Like, uh, which this actually just kind of takes me right into the process, right? Mm -hmm. So before we start, we don't just make stuff, right? What we do is we make, you know, like essentially we make it for a reason. Why are we making this content? Um, and a lot of times what that's going to be is either our customers are going to tell us, you know, it's like, hey, why did, you know, in your onboarding calls or, you know, in your own reviews, a customer is going to tell people why they connected with you. You know, they're going to go into your reviews as like, yeah, I absolutely love working with Tom. He made video creation super easy. And I'm, I'm no longer afraid to get in front of the camera. Well, you know what that tells me? That tells me this is content about like how to easily get in front of the camera and how to make video creation easier. They're saying it because you'll find like, it's not only two reviews, you're going to have 20 reviews and they all say the same stuff. Right. So you, you check that out in your own thing. When you do customer surveys, they're going to tell you the same kind of information. And just through your, your, whether it's onboarding calls or touch points, like when people are happy, they love it. And they're going to let you know, if you're a new company and you have no history at all, then what you do is you just find a competitor in town, find somebody who's doing it really good. 
go through their reviews. You can find out what people are happy about. But what's going to be more effective is you find out what people are are upset about. You, you know what I mean? Like if it's like he quoted me this and then the, you know, he quoted me 1,000 and then the final bill was 5,000. You know, like that's pretty easy to say, oh, you know what we need? We need a video on transparent pricing. Or if it's like um, these people never get back to me, I'm just a number to them. Okay, well, welcome to Adron and where you're more than just a number. This is how I prove to you that we're more than just a number, right? Yeah, like I'm so, not just. Yeah, so just to kind of recap for um, people that are listening, this segment, right, we're, we're talking about is the how. Right. In terms of doing your research for your content marketing. So if you're buying into the fact that content marketing is important because that's how your brand shows up, this is how you build your know, like, and trust. The next thing is how do I start with what in the heck am I creating content around? So what Kevin's talking about is whether you are a seasoned business or you're brand new to business, if you're in a certain industry, right, you're going to have competition, right? Otherwise, it, well, well, I mean, otherwise you may not be in a market that makes sense for you to have any type of growth in. Okay. So if you're in a potential, if you're, if you're in a market that has competition, that's a good thing for one, right? No matter you, if you're brand new or experienced where you can start is what's already out there. And if you think about this in terms of your natural consumer, consumer process or consumer behavior, typical consumer behavior is you will be more quick to complain on a review site than you would be to champion um, excellent service, right or right. If y'all hearing this, comment below because I'm interested to hear what you really think and how you actually behave. Not at the business as a business owner, because as a business owner, you would want everyone that loves what you do, right, to say, "I love how they treated me. I love the experience there." But oftentimes, it's the people that are upset that go out of their way to share that with with people, whether it's just in conversation or publicly on these review sites. So if that's the case, use that as um, for yourself, right. As constructive criticism, but also use that ammunition or information, right. Across your competitors as a way to be able to understand what people are complaining about to, so that your ex you can enhance your experience, but also lean into that in your content marketing. If someone is saying all the things that Kevin had talked about, right. In the sense of these are the reasons why I'm upset. Well, can you, as a business owner, one, make sure that you aren't doing that in your own business, but then also two, speak to that. Because then you're speaking to directly to not only the person that wrote that, but the people that made a buying decision to either use that company or not use that company, right? On top of that, if you're re like if you're in a, a local business, you know you're an electrician, right? And you search all the other elect electricians in town, and you read all of their reviews, and you see the negative comments from people, and you make content specifically around those points. Like you said, these people have literally purchased electrical services before. They're in your market. When you put it out to your small community, those people are there. Like, not only is there like all this business, those people essentially are putting their hand up like, I'm not happy with my current electrician. Show me a better way. So then you can just jump on that. Like, you know, a lot of marketing is hitting people where they are in the buying process. You know, we always kind of say it. If you can echo what's going on in their own head. You know, you're, you're halfway to a sale already. So they've told you what they're thinking about. They've told you why they're unhappy. They said, I'm unhappy because this quote didn't match the price. All right, well, let me make a video and let me make sure that you see it about like, you know, what, what you're going to love about our, electric, our electrical services is when we quote a price, we stand behind that quote. That's going to matter to that person. That same person may call you, you know, like we, we know it happens because that's why we do this process. Um, another way that we go about doing our research is we also check, you know, we do like a competitor keyword analysis, wow. right? So like that's on their website. You can scan their websites using Google ads. Uh, they have a, a keyword analysis tool. So you just type in their website. It's going to tell you all the keywords that that website is ranking for. And then you can use that to, to basically make content. What you do is you find like the the top two or three people in that industry, in that city, they're going to have terms that are there, right? And then you just, like, they're literally going to give you a list of ideas. That's what's going to come back. It's a list of ideas. Kev, and is this you, free? Yeah, absolutely. It's free. So the first two things that you've already talked about and shared with us are one, right? Go on to review sites in your industry. And if you're a local business, go on to those and look locally, right? And see the good and the bad, aggregate that stuff, and then speak to that as a first spot. And that's obviously free, just takes time, 
Second mm -hmm. spot is Google AdWords has a keyword feature to where you can look at local competitors that are ranking or not ranking, however you want to choose to prioritize them, put their website into the keyword planner and it should spit out what they're ranking for, Kev. Is that what it, is that what you said? Yeah, it'll do a scan of, of all of the web all of the keywords that their website has included. Mm -hmm. And then it's also going to tell you like what they're doing well. Right. So it'll it'll give you like uh bid volume and that kind of stuff, like. Uh, essentially telling you these are the terms that are are most valuable to these people if they're going to run a a paid ads campaign. Mm -hmm. So like that's just a free starting tool. After that, you also might want to go into TikTok. And you know, if we stick with the electrical example, you're just going to type in there like how to install your dishwasher. You know, like if that's what's showing up, right? The keywords that those successful companies in that same industry are looking for are nine times out of 10 going to be the words that are on their landing pages, their home pages. The reason that they're showing up number one is because they have those terms. So take those terms and then make it how to, you know, wow. how to find a good electrician, how to, you know, how to install pot lights. That's the one I know for sure ranks. Um, you know, how to, how to know if your electrician is giving you a good price. Like there's all of those kind of things. You turn it from like the, the keywords, turn those keywords into a question, put them into either TikTok or Google. You could also just go into Google's search bar and you can say, you know, how to electric and then just see what pops up, right? It's going to it's gonna pre-populate the answers for you of what people are looking for, right? That's a great place to start with your content. It's not necessarily all video content that they're going to get, but that's actually going to give you places to start with like your blog posts, right? The way that I think of a lot of content is you want to start with your blog post and then you branch off. What different ways can we get people to our blog post? Right. Kevin, what we're talking about right now is just research, right? So you've already given us basically three different ways to find research um, for the things you want to say, create content around before even identifying what types of content pieces that you want to create. Right. So let's move into the, the second part in terms of the creation part. When it comes to identifying, now we have a list of content that we want to create. Um, what's the very first thing that you'd recommend us? What, what's the very first type of content you would recommend us uh, to create and why? Well, generally, you know, generally, I always suggest that you start with a blog post as like the, the kind of the anchor of your content creation strategy. Right. The reason that you want people to your website is, well, you track them, <laughs> right? On your website, you make them an offer. On your website, they have the ability to convert. You know, there is other ways to do it. But when people hit your website, they can now hit your retargeting audiences. They can definitely give you their name, email, phone number. They can purchase from you directly. You want them on your website, right? So if I decide you know, to, to pivot and use a different example, if we're using, say, a digital marketing company, um, if I write, let's say, a blog post about how to create content, right? Essentially, I'm going to have that on here. And I know anybody who makes it to this page is interested in making content, right? They're interested in being able to streamline their process. They're interested in being able to get the most kind of bang for their buck, the most you know, the most kind of payback for their effort, mm. right? So I start with that blog post because essentially now they're on my turf. Now they're on my real estate. I own the blog post. I don't own Facebook. I don't own Meta. I don't own all that other stuff, right? But if you come here and I get your name, email, phone number, you're on my, you know, basically you're on my email list, which I own. You're in my retargeting audiences, which I own a little bit less. Uh, and basically you've also signaled that you are interested in this topic. So I can give you other content about this with that being the center point. Now you're thinking, okay, what can I do to actually get somebody here? And, and this is where I think a lot of people kind of are doing it a little wrong. What I like to do is make one long piece of content like this video, <laughs> uh, after we make the long form. What we want to do is chop it up into smaller pieces of content that we can use in various different ways, right? So this is a long-term a long -term one-hour pod. It's also going to be three or four shorter pods. Uh, it's then going to be a bunch of like less than one-minute reels. It can also be 
um, basically infographics that would lead people to the blog post. You know, all of what we're going to do is use this to create a blog post. And then that blog post is going to create new audiences. So every piece of content that you make should be pointing back to the same, the centrifuge of your, of your strategy. And the strategy is to add people to your list or actually add new buyers. Yeah. And I know I wanted to uh, basically comment on that. So visually what I'm seeing when you say that is the um, hub and spoke type of content plan, right? So <laughs> what that means is you imagine um, a wheel with one central hub, right? Being that long form pillar post that uh, Kevin's talking about or a pillar piece of content like a long form uh, podcast episode where we're talking about content marketing almost from start to finish, right? And then all of your spoke pieces of content or the smaller ones that you're either repurposing or chunking out that lead back to the larger one are the smaller subsidiary or smaller things that you can either break off or talk about in a smaller uh, fashion. And in this case, if we're talking about blog posts, one long form blog post, right? That is text-based. And then from that one, we're spinning off smaller ones, either repurposing and taking um, pieces off or just talking about um, a small portion of that longer form as a, a spoke from that larger hub, right? Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I just kind of really want to, it's a little bit of a divergence, but to keep in mind, just because you make a piece of content today, it doesn't mean that you have to just post all of the stuff today. You know, it's not all this content for this week. Um, I already shared some uh, recipe stuff with you. This is the stuff we did for a client. Um, do you mind pulling that up, please? Absolutely. So if you take a look at this, Tom's going to share basically a, what we did here is we made a recipe video for Philly cheat steaks. When we went live with it the first time, what we did is an actual live video. So that was like a 25 minute video or something as we're making the recipe. After we did the 25 minute recipe, we sent it on to, uh, Kyle in our developing team and Kyle made this video this 50 seconds. This is this appeals to the ASMR crowd. Can we play this now? Yeah, please. All right, let's do it. I ate so many of those. <laughs> um, I'm hungry now. See, now I'm hungry. That was a, it was a great day to be there. I can't lie. Um, but essentially, like I said, that was a long form video that got turned into a 50 second ASMR. We also did a voiceover version of that same video and put it out a few weeks later. Uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to ask you to load the second version of that, please. Okay. So uh, just to kind of recap what um, Kevin's talking about is that video in itself was uh, version number two. The first one was the voiceover. The second one is obviously catering to the crowd that likes those uh, vibrant sounds, right? Mm -hmm. The ASMR crowd, right? And th there's an acronym for that. Feel free to Google it. I don't remember top, top of mind. Oh, if okay. you do, Kev, go. Okay. So um, it's something that as a foodie, what is it? Foodie is foods are visual. They're stimulating. They're, they appeal to your senses, right? So that's where you can take that very first, say, um, all the A roll content and B roll content, chop it up in that sense, right? Have your, your team do this, but then also add these sounds if they weren't included in that original clip. So then it basically stimulates those uh, different senses when someone's watching it, right? Mm -hmm. Some people like instructional videos and some people just like following along, right? right? It's different strokes, different folks, right? That was what we did off the top. So there's a live video, there's a voiceover, there's a 50 second ASMR. Uh, if we check out the next one, okay. uh, these are just different slides. So you can just look at slide one. Okay. Just do slide one, slide two, basically. You should be able to advance here. So what we're doing here, this is for Instagram. This is a video slideshow. This is something that I actually got from you, Tom. Thank you. So 
So after you get your four or five second clip right there, then you have to scan over to the next one. And what happens when we scan over to the next one? Inter Instagram gives us those interaction points, right? Yeah. So now this is actually, you know, it's the same content, but now it's giving different people more chances to interact. I put this one farther along in the cycle. Yeah. Because, you know, people who want the recipe video are going to watch the recipe video first. People watching the, the back shot, not the back shots. That's not the right word. <laughs> Cut that out. Yeah. Or not, so people that are watching it after the fact, um, you know, we're basically giving them other firm other forms of content to catch on to. They all go back to the blog posts, like I said before, right? And then on the blog post, we have a way to catch their name, email, phone number. And we also make them an offer if they want to find some great uh, products like the ones we use in this video, they can opt in here. And we're actually going to give them, I forget what the offer is on that one. I think it's 50 pounds of ground beef added to their order for free. So right? think about this. Let me unpack what Kevin, you just said and did, right? So mm -hmm. the very first one that we didn't watch was the voiceover one. Second one no, no, no. is the very first live video. Live video. See, first was live video. Then it was the voiceover, right? Mm -hmm. And then number three version, which is the very first one that we showcased, was the ASMR one, which is all the sounds and the sizzles and all that stuff, right? And mm -hmm. then uh, version number four, which is what we just watched right now, is the slideshow version, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me unpack that for you guys in the sense of utilizing this, right? So, for example, the two one, the two videos that we watched already from Kevin, the very first one um, we can use as you can tell, right, from the, um, the screen share that these are all vertical videos. Vertical videos, if you re guys recall, what platforms can you put vertical videos on? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as a short, and uh, TikTok, right? So that one type of video can go into four different places. On top of that, what Kevin did was in the one that we just watched, the slideshow version, um, he's leveraging Instagram's carousel feature. And what he did was he broke up that video into four different slides in the carousel. So here's some cool nuances, right? Geeky nuances with utilizing carousels. Carousels can either be videos and or images. You clearly just saw that those are videos. What happens with carousels, though, is the unique thing about them in Instagram is um, what happens is when the carousel is first published, what, what Instagram does in terms of the algorithm is it tries to see how many people like that first slide and then the engagement on that, right? However that performs, right? The second round, what uh, Instagram does is it'll take that second slide, okay? Hear me on that second slide, i.e. in this case, second video, and then it will take that and then send that out as well to see what um, what the consumption rate is on that in terms of how entertaining it is on that. Right. So the nuance behind that is you can utilize the same video, but also post it as a carousel and or a reel on Instagram and get different lift points or test and, and basically repurpose that same thing in a different way. And also the third thing that Kevin did was he utilized different back end offers on all of these posts as well. So I wanted to just basically highlight that and unpack that for people that are, that are watching this. Okay, go on, brother. So on top of that, mm. the next version of this is instead of showing you videos, we're just going to show you a, a picture slideshow. Fascinating. Right? Now, is that the third thing that you sent? Yes, it is. Let me pull it up for you. Uh, no, the third thing I, I feel like is oh. the blog post. Oh, okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on. So in other words, what you're saying is, hey, there's another type of carousel that we can do, but instead of doing videos in that carousel, we're going to do images, right? Yeah. So it's almost like a flip book in terms of recipe book is what I'm hearing. Yeah, basically. We actually design them like recipe posts. Yeah. Say that shit one more time for the people in the back. Yeah. We actually design them. Like if I can watch six images, people are smart. You know, it used to be back in the day you had to show them, you know, it was like, we probably have different guys on TV, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like Emma Lagasse would be like, no, I'm cutting the onions. And now we're adding onions and now we're, sorry, and now we're adding garlic, bam, now we're doing this. These days, you just show somebody, oh, there's onions and garlic. Like, did did you need an explanation? Uh, I hope no. not, but there's maybe a pictures of, like, obviously those go into the recipe. You're not going to like hit the next slide of beef with onions and garlic in it and be like, well, where do those come from? Right? It's, it's obvious. This is what it is. People are smart. Their, their minds are you know, humans, we evolve to basically make things easier for ourselves, right? So what used to be, I had to go to my grandma's house and I'd study with her for 10 years. 
then turned into, ah, my mom can show me in half an hour, yeah. then turned into, I can watch this dude on TV for 10 minutes, turned into, I'll watch this guy on YouTube for five minutes, turned into, I'll watch this one minute video on TikTok, turned into, you could just show me a slideshow, turned into, it's it's like everything. We just condense it to make it the most easy to comprehend and different people like different forms of the content, right? So now we're down to just the videos and then, or sorry, now we're down to just the picture slideshow. And then the other two versions of this is just uh, basically you have one picture, like say like the reveal, you know, this is your Philly cheat steak. You got your gooey cheese as you're lifting it up. Just one picture. It's beautiful. Some people are going to see that and go to the blog post. And then the other version of that is just like a, a, like a five, six second video of only the reveal, right? That all comes from the same content, right? That's all from the same live video. And it just got repurposed. I don't even know how many pieces that was, right? But you don't have to put these all at one day. Mm. That just gave us, I believe it's seven pieces of content. And well, let, let's show the blog post and then we'll recap in terms of what we did yeah, based sure, off of one it. thing. One thing mm -hmm. in terms of the item was the Philly cheat steak. So it's a mm -hmm. play on words if people weren't uh, catching that. So let's show mm -hmm. this blog post first. I want, to, I want you to walk us through this and then we'll recap in terms of how many how many things, how many different ways we've been able to showcase one, one sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. All right, brother, go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, to just take a quick look at this, uh, you know, so it's a WordPress blog. You give people reasons to share uh, right off the top because we know we're sending traffic here. You see, there is the link to uh, Grasshead Beef. That's a product page. The reason we link there, that helps with internal linking for your website. That gives you like an SEO play, especially because we're sending a lot of traffic to this. A lot of people are going to hit that. Then we go down. We give them, this is the 50 second video that we just watched. Uh, we give them a product list. That's a link to a different beef page. Uh, one of one of those is a link to like information about the farms. The other one is a link to the actual product. Then we give you some sexy food shots right here. We break down the recipe. What we try to do though, we like it's like it's a meme now of like you know when you tell somebody this is the recipe and then they're just like, well, I you know like they'll give you a, a half an hour of, of reading before you get to the actual recipe because they're just stuffing it for SEO. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have to worry about SEO. We're sending people to this page, right? We're making the traffic happen. So I'm not going to stuff it filled with like a bunch of that stuff that people don't want. That almost tells people like this content is 10 years old, right? Like that, that just keyword stuffing strategy, that's old. That's not what people want these days. Um, and then we go through here, we give them the shots. Those would be in... Um, Essentially, these shots are some of the ones we used in the uh, recipe slideshow. Yep. Um, actually, hold on right here, too. We also have Brimstone Barbecue as the author of this post. So Brimstone Barbecue is an influencer that we work with, right? The reason we do that, they're putting it out on their social channels at the same time. They're also putting it on their website. They're, you know, basically, how do we do it? That's the person who made it. So it's seven pieces of content for us. And when he puts it out, that's seven pieces of content that's actually going to show up on our page as well. Let me unpack that. Brimstone, you said Brimstone Barbecue is an influencer uh, and a company slash media site, if you will, in this sense, um, that you work with. So do you work with them in the sense of they basically utilize Nutrifarm's uh, products? They use Nutrifarm's products. They uh -huh. they show up at events with Nutrifarm stuff. Like they they work with them. Right. Got it. Uh, Here's another thing that I point that, that I caught that you didn't point out yet that I wanted to showcase to people. There's a little PDF link and a print link. Why would you have those here on a recipe page, Kevin? Uh, basically, people consume it in different ways. Some people are going to find it. Some people are going to save the blog post. Other people, it seems crazy to me, but other people print it off and they just keep a recipe book. Like an old, like to me, this is why I love this job is because so many people just think differently. Mm -hmm. you know, like it, it's very natural for somebody to just assume that everybody thinks like me, but nobody thinks like you literally nobody thinks like you. Right. So it's just kind of getting that thought process through. And that's, we're not making eight pieces of content because we need a piece of content. We're making it because 
there's like a million ways somebody can consume content. Yeah. So let me unpack that. Right. So what Kevin's saying is for this one client, because there is an also there, there's also people that naturally use the product, meaning buy the meat that Nutra Farms basically sells, right? Here's one of the you know perfect cases in point, right? So when you basically deconstruct the Philly cheat steak, right, there has to be someone that makes it. So the person that makes mm -hmm. it develops the recipe. One of the products of that recipe or that sandwich is from uh, Nutra Farms. One of the people that creates that sandwich is Brimstone Barbecue. So why not? cross post or cross pollinate the audiences by using the same end thing. And in this case, it's a sandwich, right? Across both those different channels. So one thing that you had said, right, that I want to basically showcase as well is um, we don't worry about SEO in terms of keyword stuffing and having all this stuff, all this fluff. If you go to a page that is a recipe page, what do you want to see on there? The recipe, right? And uh, different variations of what you're going to see where either when what's supposed to look like maybe before, during and after, if, if that's the case. So Kevin showcased that on the blog post to showcase the recipe, everything that people would want to see, nothing more, nothing less. But in addition to that, what you had said was in terms of driving traffic, forcing people there, what Kevin means when he says forcing people there is because there's so many different ways in which you can get a consumer or someone like eyeballs to this page. So what he did was he basically gave it to those different types of people. Meaning if this person is more visual, if this person is more video, as likes to consume video, uh, there's a person that likes to consume video, but then also wants to listen to what's going on in terms of the voiceover. There's the live video type of a person. There's the um, ASMR and sounds and stuff type of a person. There's the visual flip book imagery type of person. There's a recipe person, but the recipe person could be, I'm going to archive this PDF in my digital recipe book, or I'm gonna print this out to my physical recipe book, right? Or I don't know anything about Nutra Farms, but I love Brimestone Barbecue. So I'm gonna go onto their page. Those are the different ways that he's driving traffic and attention to uh, both companies, but then specifically for people that eat Philly cheat sticks, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, um, yeah, that's a great synopsis. But on top of that, when Brimstone posts it on their recipe blog, Brimstone is linking to Nutra Farms. Nutra Farms is linking to Brimstone. So mm -hmm. now what you get is some cross pollination in terms of SEO. Like in general, in 2023, if you're trying to, then the internet is mature, right? Like if you're trying to show up for a term that people have been using since day one on the internet, you're not going to show up. Like there's somebody. Why would somebody look for my Philly cheesesteak video when Gordon Ramsay already made it? Mm. Right? They're not. It's not going to happen. Right? So what you have to do is basically find a way to send people there. You got to kind of backdoor it. Right? You got to give people a different way to do it. You have to switch it from Philly cheesesteak to Philly cheat steak. And we're using a cheat steak because essentially it's, you know, you can make it as cheap. Right? Cheesesteak requires a steak. This is ground beef. Right. So it's a great uh, way to do it. And then on that post, actually, the bottom of it is it was the offer for ground beef. Like if you want to purchase from Nutra Farms, you can do it and we'll give you this extra incentive of I think it was 50 pounds of ground beef added to your order. Let me right? pull that back up so then people can actually see that. Yeah, it would be in the conclusion. So it's not like I'm only recipe. We give a paragraph intro and then a paragraph outro. Right. But where this post actually does something. Is it there um, or is it lower? Uh, oh, you know what? Maybe we don't have it on this one. Um, but the offer was so good, it's no longer available. That's why it's not on this blog post. No, we, we literally, yeah, we, we took it off a few weeks ago. But okay. essentially, this is this is what it is. We're making the offers. That's probably where one of the beef links goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but just hit people where they are. What is it that they like to consume? And... And essentially, you ha people have to know that you sell a certain thing in order to buy this certain thing from you, right? But the overarching point of this is saying, when, when you're creating content, do it in a smart way. Make it for a reason and then purpose it in a bunch of different ways. You have so many times to contact, but most people, like, you know, be honest with me, Tom, like, how many times have you spent hours and hours and hours making a video? You put it out once, it gets 50, you know, 50 views, and then the thing is done. You know, 
If I was worried about virality, um, I would have never started in the video uh, space or consulted in it and encouraged it because that's not the point. It really isn't the point. It, it's not you're not a failure if your video doesn't go um, viral, if you will. And if that's the case, then I'd say 75 percent of my stuff out there failed. But I still get calls. I still get inbound DMs. I still get people saying, hey, I saw it. I'm interested in this or I need some help with this. Do you know someone or can I work with you? Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying it's a failure, but what I'm mm -hmm. saying is in the exact same time it makes to make the one piece, it's also eight pieces. Right. right? I, get Dude, I got this strategy from you, so don't get it twisted. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. blasting shots here. What it is, oh, no, is no, no, essentially, no. we just need to, if we're going to do it, do it smart, right? Yeah. If you're going to spend the app, like that took me and Glenn from Brimstone the better part of an afternoon to shoot. So, you know, you add that up, that's eight hours. That's not cheap. Then there's a video editor. Then we're posting. Then we're making the blog post. You know, like that's a lot of time. That's no way that took less than 15 hours in total. Yeah. Right. But we turn that 15 hours into multiple posts. And not only is it like, say, the seven, eight posts I defined, we can then just post those ones again a year from now. So you're right? saying you repost the same content on those platforms and you won't get penalized? absolutely. Yeah. So, of course, loaded question. But I go circling back to what you're saying. I think another key takeaway from what you're saying, though, is what I've been encouraging for years. Right. If you're talking about creating content, utilize video at the top of the food chain or the top of that content period, meaning lead in with video, because mm -hmm. what happens from that is all the things that we just talked about. Right. If there's video with voiceover, then what happens is that video then can be repurposed, as we've talked about. The voiceover can be repurposed, as we talked about or we didn't talk about. The voiceover in itself can be transcribed. Right. It can be added to a video and, and basically have captions on it. The actual um, audio itself can be transcribed into, say, breaking down the recipe into a blog post, into a text format is my point, right? But then also the video itself, their stills can be taken. So then the video can be turned into images, which they can then be repurposed as well. So even though it took maybe 15 hours, oh my gosh, Tom and Kevin, 15 hours for one piece of content? No, 15 hours for one foundational like asset group, four pieces of content that can then be utilized in different variations. So if you think about that in the context of your content marketing funnel, oh my gosh, what is this again, right? The, the whole cliche of having a content marketing funnel, right? No, think about this. Top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. We've already showcased over seven ways where an eight-hour shoot, content shoot for one thing has been repurposed over seven to eight different ways. And it can be utilized over however long you're selling cheat steaks for and however long you're selling beef for, right? Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yeah. And, and to actually take it a step further, we have the blog post, but we've also added that into, we have a downloadable recipe PDF, Damn. right? Now this is a lead generation tool. Wow. Right. Tell me more about that. Why would you want to do that? Uh, well, like in a, in a situation like this one, people eat food every single day and, you know, me and my wife have the conversation literally, I don't know, four or five nights a week. What do you want to have for dinner? right? You run out of ideas. Mm -hmm. So if you find some channel like this one where you've watched four or five videos, they're all good. Why wouldn't I want to download the recipe PDF? You know, some people want to print it. Some people want this. Other people, when you say, hey, here's our best, you know, 20, I forget what the offer is, but essentially it's like 20 recipes you can make this summer, right? These are, these are grill style recipes. In Canada, grilling isn't really a thing after November. <laughs> right. So it, it just, it is what it is. Right. So this becomes that piece of content. And I didn't even tell you, like, we also sent out an email to our email list. Right. So with 200,000 people in the database, you can tell them like, Hey, here's, here's a great recipe you can make this weekend. All it takes is a, a pound of ground beef, uh, and a little bit of time. You know? So yeah, let me unpack that, right? So what Kevin's talking about is in incorporating a lead generation mechanism inside of this playbook, right? Or inside of this content marketing plan, specifically for Philly cheat steaks. What that does is the person that wants the downloadable right recipe, right? Um, we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna give that to them in exchange for their ideally their name, email address, and their phone number. By way, one, creating and growing your database, but then two, what that allows you to do is to stay in contact with them. Because if you eat ground beef this way, you might want to eat ground beef in a different way, or you might want to see brimstone at their next barbecue event or all the things, 
right? So it's a way for you to literally exchange value for value because you want to be able to continue the conversation, right? On top of that, one other thing that you haven't talked about yet is basically uh, another way to distribute, right? So we've talked about organic channels of distribution, but what else can you do with the content if you wanted to force that around people or warm people up to like, hey, it's about to be barbecue season again. Mm -hmm. What can you do to basically put this in front of them again uh, outside of just republishing it on your organic channels, Kevin? So yeah, you have your email list, you have your uh, messenger contacts, you know, like, hey, we were talking to you a while ago about this. You want me to send you five great recipes you can make this weekend? Yeah. All of a sudden that conversation is back open, right? And it's just by making a list of the actual PDF recipes that we just made. You just format it a little bit different. Like every piece of content that you make can be reused in a bunch of ways. It doesn't have to only be single. It doesn't have to be in the same format, but put them all together and be able to track it, right? Like there's there's great resources. Flipping book is one that we're we're pretty heavy on right now. Um, you know, there there is just PDFs, especially if the PDFs come from your CRM. You know, like if I use it through Go High Level or if I use it through HubSpot, I can see who opened my email. Mm. And I can also see who, you know, opened that piece of content. And obviously the last page of that piece of content is like, you know, hey, if you like all these ground beef recipes, you're going to love this great offer about ground beef. You know, reply to this and we'll we'll send you the offer or, you know, whatever your point of contact is that just kind of brings them back into the fold. So I'm going to circle back to, I might have been episode seven, we were talking about building a list. That's mm -hmm. the value. This is how in actually it put in practice the importance of building a list. Now you can leverage that list when it comes time to warm your audience back up. So then almost pre-selling during that next season. Okay. So you have all those different channels that Kevin talked about, right? An email list. It could be your uh, conversation in terms of your mini chat or your uh, messenger list. It could be your retargeting list, if you will. It could be your SMS campaigns, all right? Right. So all that basically can basically stem from, and you can extract value out of these content pieces um, almost in an evergreen style fashion. And it may be seasonal because uh, barbecue season and grilling season is not all seasons, right? Like it is in California. Like it's not the same way in Canada, you know? Um, mm -hmm. One other thing that you didn't mention as well is you can put this in front of people by just putting ad spend in front of it. It doesn't have to be a lead generation campaign either. All the different mm -hmm. things that we can talk about probably on a different episode. It might be another episode for us, Kevin. Um, is in terms of how to then use, put the money behind these things to get that awareness out there for uh, your existing audience, are you targeting or new audience, custom lookalike audience or people in a certain area, right? That's a great point. Because with this Philly cheat steak video, what we did after it was published, once we had our, our social proof on it, we boosted it for $50 a day for the better part of two months. When we run an ad, our click to website is, you know, say around $2. Okay. When we do it on the recipe post, guess at the, guess the cost per click. Mm, 50 cents. 16 cents. Say that one more time. How many? 60? 16 cents. One, six, one, six, 16 one, six. cents as opposed yeah. to 200, uh, two, mm -hmm. 200 cents, $2. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so what's the difference? It's people want this content. You know, people mm. are like interested as opposed to this is an offer you're selling me something, right? When I'm okay. selling you, I automatically tune out. But hey, this is how to get the recipe. It, it's ridiculous. They don't opt in all the time at all. But what they do is they find the website, they find this recipe. Oh, they see the pop-up when they're trying to leave. Oh, what is this company? Let's check a little more out. And then they're gonna kind of navigate through and they know who you are. So now all of a sudden that remarketing, literally it would have costed $2 to get somebody in your remarketing list. And now for the same price, I don't know how math works, but let's call that 15 people for the price of one. So now I'm going to circle back to the very top of uh, why content marketing, right? I'm going to ask mm -hmm. a loaded question to our audience, right? Would it be worth it to spend eight hours of your time filming this uh, content around ground beef for, a, for one specific use case for ground beef in a Philly cheat steak uh, sandwich? to then be able to drive traffic to your website for 16 cents per set of eyeballs. Yeah. Okay? Think about it. On that. top of it, you get to eat all the sandwiches. Like I ate so many of those sandwiches. It was a great day. Like, and just kind of to, to put a bow on everything is like mm -hmm. 
the the limitations are literally only as creative as you're going to be, right? Yeah. Because I'm not touching on five or six other things. You know, there's absolutely you can do SMS blasts. You know, like you know, you, you have a huge database. You know, right. even even when I was a really when I was a, a my first year in business, you know, I'm going to be honest, we sucked. It is what it is. I didn't know how to do it. I was trying to figure it out. You know, looking back, I gave a lot of effort. But, you know, that's that's kind of what it is. Um, but even in that year, I probably talked to 15, 20 businesses. So if I had a piece of content that mattered to one business, if I had a piece of content that I that I know actually has some value, if I were to just text 20 of those people and say, like, hey, I I made this like one tool that'll help you like convert more leads into actual customers. Do you want me to send it to you? They'll all say yeah. Like yeah. nobody's gonna say no. So think about this. On my list for a reason. 100%. Yeah. I want to just uh, piggyback off of that as well. So for the marketing uh, people that are watching this, right? So how could you do that as well? Right? Thinking about this from our standpoint, uh, what if we were able to give you a, a PDF or a guide on the our content marketing process between the two of us, right? Our companies and our brands and our experience, right? The past two decades, right? In terms of the why content marketing, how, what, where right? And then be able to utilize that in your own brand. I mean, in your own business to then help more uh, of your uh, future customers or any existing customers and clients as well. Would that be a value to you? Right? Would that get you to that finish line a lot faster? And you think about you also utilizing this in your own marketing stack, give away that value for free, right? Free value. That's even better than other people say, say paid um, stuff is, right? What is that going to do, right? It's going to build more know, like, and trust with your brand. So when it comes time for them to then say, think of hiring someone, who are they going to think of first? Right. Mm, absolutely. And also there's there's a lot of power, you know, to, to just echo what you said in giving away something better than the competitor makes you pay for. Like, what does that say? What what does that say in your head? It's like, oh, this this guy's not concerned with this. This guy's only concerned with like with me succeeding. You know, this guy has bigger fish to fry. They're not going to nickel and dime me on every step of the process. They've shown, you know, like they gave me enough. And now I'm at the point where I just need help implementing. You know, they get to the point, anything you send somebody, like in all reality, unless they're doing this full time, they're not really going to be able to, it's not that they can't sort it out, but at the same time, it's going to raise more questions and answers a lot of times. And that's where you come in. Like, who are they going to ask the question to? Obviously the person who put together the list and now, now you have the door open, you can get new business or you can just kind of tell them about it, you know, depending yeah. on what it is. Even if you just tell them, they're going to come back six months from now when they have a bigger problem because they implemented what you told them. Because who has the answer for the next step of the funnel? It's clearly you. So yeah, that's some marketing bombs for you at the end. Um, I mean, without uh, further ado in the context of wrapping this up, this one went um, longer than our normal ones, but I'm excited for it because there was so much value in it. There's examples, there's stuff that sounds like we're going to have to be creating some uh, additional templates and guides for, for everyone here. And I'm, I'd like, I'm excited to do that as well. Um, but uh, with, with, with that being said, Kevin, is there anything that you'd like to add as we wrap up uh, episode nine? Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't even understand the, the time limit there, but yeah, the, uh, sometimes you're in a zone, Yeah. but in reality, once you have it, and once people are coming to your page, track it, how do you know that it works? Right? Like, it's not just making it, it's not just putting it out there. It's like actually being able to concretely say, this is what happened. I can document it. I can show you that this, for example, you know, this certain content strategy has resulted in over $300,000 worth of organic business for one for one of our clients, right? Like it is what it is. It works. People want content. You know, Instagram isn't about marketers, even though marketers super corrupted, but you don't go on there because like, I wonder what the newest marketing is. Yeah. You know, and I'm not showing up because I want to see what the ads are. I'm showing up for content. Mm -hmm. Same thing with TikTok, same thing with everything. If you're on there, but if you're going to put the time into creating it, also put in that extra little bit to be able to judge if it worked and then figure out, you know, maybe certain pieces of content need some money put behind them because they're working so well. But it's not just throwing money on every account. That's what's up. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback for us, uh, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, whether it's commenting below or around these video um, and or reaching out to us um, at adronin.com or TNT Digital Marketing 
Uh, and with that, that is a wrap for episode nine of Marketing WTF, uh, content marketing and all things around uh, soup to nuts, um, why, how, what, where, and all the things. And I'm out.